Before we dive in too deep into our, our course, I'd like to go ahead and take a little bit of time to change some application and document settings to kind of give you a little more success from the start with using HSM and kind of give you more of an advantage on the CAM side of things. Uh, what I'm going to do first is go ahead and I'm going to start a part just so you can see some of the things in the environment and the way things are set up. So this is the vanilla setup. As we start, we're in our 3D model tab, we're in our sketch environment, we have our CAM tool over here to the right a little bit. Um, this is where we're going to be spending a lot of our time as programmers. However, the environment is set up more towards designers. Uh, first, what I'd like to show you is just when you start a sketch inside of Inventor, and we're going to go over a lot of this in more detail a little bit later. You've got to go through several steps. Uh, being a, a CNC programmer, you may not want to go through some of these steps. We may want to skip some of them. The other issues are is that things like annotation size is a little small. You can see the scale of things is very tiny. So if I come up here and I select uh, a point to go ahead and start a sketch or a midpoint to go ahead and reference in starting a new po position of a sketch, you can see that those points are kind of small. A little too small for me, uh, along with a lot of these glyphs, and that's what these are called, or glyphs, or uh, constraint references, however you want to, want to label them. Uh, everything's kind of a bit small, so I just wanted to show you the environment as it is. Exit out of this, get right back to it here. I'm going to come up to this Applications I icon up here, and then you can see here, this is where you can also create new folders once again. You can open folders from here. You can manage your project files. But I'm going to come down here to Options, and that opens the Applications Options dialog box. Now, for the most part, I keep things pretty well vanilla, and in doing this, that helps Inventor uh, kind of maintains its continuity without having too many customizations in play. It also helps other users if other users need to use my login for whatever reason to be able to work. Uh, it keeps things a little more simplified. Now the things that I change right here within the general tab that are very important is those annotations I was talking about. I would like to actually up those the scale of those to two. And then the undo file size. I'm going to go ahead and double this up so that I can undo twice as many megabytes of information as I could before. Moving on to the Save tab, now this is very important to know, is, is that Inventor does not have an autosave function. Uh, the reason for this is actually very, very simple. Autosave pulls resources from the CPU, and if you are doing an in-depth assembly or a very large design or a massive file with a lot of tool paths, then that CPU time tasking that it takes to save the part file while you're working, it taxes the PC, it also taxes the software. So in getting rid of that, they stop any kind of lagging or annoying glitches that may happen with, with an autosave function. They just got rid of it altogether. Now they do give you a reminder, and what I recommend doing is bumping this down to say 10 minutes. Okay, and then keep that save reminder on and make sure that that save reminder tick box is, is ticked. Files we'll go over uh, during another portion of the lesson. We're going to do some template files. Now colors. Starting out, we're in uh, the winter night theme here, and they give you several different themes. Instead of giving you complete control over colors, you have access to just different themes within here that uh, kind of set the conditions that you're using HSM in. Now I personally I don't mind the winter night. I do prefer the old millennium style and, and this is the light blue background with red and blue selections and black uh, sketch selections there again whenever something is constrained and fully defined things are black selection boxes you can see the different colors here between design and drafting this is this is something that I just got used to over the years as an inventor user and prefer this standard background now I will change it to the millennium for for this class uh, feel free to keep it that way I do like the new gradient background which pulls in a little bit of gray the other thing about this background is is that the HSM toolpaths seem to pop a little more so it's easier to see the toolpaths up against the part file which typically comes in as a gray color fully fully changeable of course but as that gray color comes in with our dark blue toolpaths in HSM 
this is a better contrast. Uh, the other thing, just for fun, what I like to do is go back to the old themes. This is just the icon themes. What you can see is this, this is the typical light blue and gray theme that they had in here. I'm going to change that to the original yellow just because it pops a little bit more. On the display tab, what I like to do is to go into the settings dialog box and make sure that whenever I open any file, what's going to happen is, is that my model edges are going to be set to one color because I like all of my edges coming in black so that I see everything. And that my visual style automatically comes in with shaded with edges. And that's going to pull those edges out automatically and make it so that I don't often have to go in and change the visual settings through the user interface at all. This is just going to keep my display appearances as I want them at all times. Other than that, I'm going to keep everything else pretty well, pretty well as it is. I'll go over this hardware uh, tab real fast. What I like to show here is if you have a really powerful PC, you can go ahead and switch this over to quality. If you switch over to performance, this is going to be there again for your mid-range to higher-end CAD computers as well. However, they do give us these different options, this last option here, which is the conservative. Now, if you're on an older PC that has an older graphics card and maybe you're going to be taxing it a little more, and, and this is typical on shop floors that haven't upgraded any of their PC equipment, you can also run a, a quick diagnostic of what your software is, cap your hardware is capable of with use of the software and you can run that directly off of the software graphics. I go ahead and just stick with the vanilla performance. Other than that, that's pretty much all I change. Everything else I like to keep vanilla. One thing I do want to give as an option within the part file is, is that when you start a brand new part, something you may want to do as a machinist is go ahead and sketch on the XY plane. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit, click Apply to these, and I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to close that. I'm going to open a part file real quick and now you can see the changes that kind of have happened here. You can see that these these panels now, all their little icons pop out a little bit more. My background's changed quite a bit more. If I'm coming into a sketch, you can see the difference between my color selections. But the biggest one is those annotations have changed. So now all of my endpoints are much bigger. Easier to see, easier to spot. And when you're programming with HSM, they're going to be easier to come in and select and make your selections faster. If I go back into my application settings here, I'm going to options, back into that part area, if I click on this sketch on XY plane, because typically as a machinist we work from the XY plane down, staring down the spindle at, in the Z axis, I'll hit apply, I'm going to hit close, now when I open the part file, if it's a brand new part file, it puts me in the sketch plane within the XY coordinate system, so once again that just automatically kicks me into that sketch, and that's an option that you can go ahead and do, some people prefer not to do it, um, it does put a little, little bit more constraint on some design, if there's an existing part that does not happen, but if you open a new file there again, that new file is automatically put into that sketch plane. So there's one last application option that we're going to go ahead and turn on. We're going to go back into the application options dialog box and we're going to head into the display and what we're going to do is we're going to switch from document settings to application settings. Now I forgot to do this when I set my settings before, but we're going to go ahead and do this. That way anytime we open a document it's going to use these shaded edge displays and all the other tools within our application options versus what the document has. Now the significance of this is going to help any users that have engineers using Autodesk Inventor internally in their shops uh, to force our application option settings as programmers to be first and foremost versus the document. With that, what I'm going to go ahead and do is hit apply. And then to save these options out externally so that if anything happens to Inventor or if I have to reinstall Inventor for any reason, what I'm going to go ahead and do is hit export. This allows us to save it anywhere. We can change our location, put it on any server we want. I'm going to go ahead and just override the default Inventor options and hit save.